keeping an eye on imaging. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack, Cardiovascular Imaging. G'day and welcome to Jack Imaging. My name's Tom Mowick, one of the associate editors. I'm here with uh, Alan Klein from the Cleveland Clinic and today we're going to discuss an interesting and important paper about the use of tissue velocity imaging in the diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis. Alan, you're very kind to write an editorial for us about this. Um, please tell us what's the background to this. Why is this important? <coughs> well, I've been involved with the area of constriction versus restriction for many years, and um, it's often hard to distinguish this clinically. There's a number of modalities, uh, including echo, M-mode, 2D, and Doppler. And around 10 years ago, uh, Mario Garcia from our institution looked at tissue Doppler to separate constriction versus restriction. And he uh, noted that the, um, the annular motion in constriction was preserved, while with restriction, it was decreased. So that was the first paper that um, used tissue Doppler to separate the two uh, similar conditions. Then there were some papers um, from overseas that looked at the, um, whether the lateral annulus actually could be evolved with the constriction and they suggested to use the uh, septal annulus instead of the lateral annulus. And they called this annulus reversus. And there was also another concept of annulus paradoxus where you, if you look at the mitral E wave over the annular E wave, it's a paradox relationship with the wedge pressure against most other diseases. So the paper uh, of note uh, by Choi and Jack Imaging um, comes up with a simple index of looking at the ratio of the lateral annulus um, tissue Doppler to the septal and also the tricuspid uh, angular velocity to the septal, showing the ratio is decreased uh, compared to something uh, like restrictive cardiomyopathy or controls. So this is a new, simple way to, to, uh, to add to the armamentarium of uh, separating uh, constriction versus restriction. I guess the problem is that this distinction between these entities is often a little artificial. Uh, what are the potential issues that you see in using this as a, as a single determinant between the two? In my experience, seeing a lot of patients with uh, pericardial disease, uh, everything doesn't fit one box. In other words, there's a lot of different pathologies that are coming on. Post-surgical is what, probably the most common cause of construction. Radiation is very common. So it's, it's too simplistic to think that just measuring an angular velocity or ratio may sol solve the issue. So I think you really have to look at a, a constellation of clinical findings and uh, multimodality imaging to, uh, to nail the difference between constriction and restriction. But I guess the message from this paper is that there is um, additional information that can be gathered from tissue velocity that should be put into the mix of the things that you would use. Right. Um, so I think if you're looking for a, a, a simple first way solution would be to, to measure the angular motion of the septum, the lateral annulus, and also the tricuspid annulus, and, and try to do this ratio. But you have to realize that uh, there are some newer modalities that down the road that may be beyond the annulus and perhaps uh, strain imaging uh, may be important because it looks at regional strain. For example, if the constriction is evolving the mid RV free wall, the angular motion may be still be preserved, but a, a strain imaging may pick this up, this regional um, deformation um, of the con constriction, uh, tethering the, the myocardium and causing decreased um, deformation. Okay, so uh, I would really commend this paper to you. First author by Choi from Korea. There's an editorial from uh, Dr. Klein. Uh, this paper really emphasizing uh, the use of tissue uh, velocity imaging for making the diagnosis of constrictive pericarditis. Thanks for joining us on Jack Imaging.